You per set sake. A number of young people at uh, a university, I discovered that none of them that I talked to understood digital computers very well because they think of it as maybe their tablet, which has a touchpad, and that's basically all they understand. So I asked, well, do you realize that inside there are logic gates hmm. which operate in conjunction with each other to perform various functions of the digital computer, and they, they didn't understand that. It turns out the fundamental problem is the speed of today's computers, they, uh, the clock, which synchronizes the operations, can be thousands of millions of clocks per second, and the machine is doing millions of things in, in any one second of time, which is too fast uh, for the human uh, mind to really track. So, I scratch built this computer, which operates at a very slow clock rate, about one <laughs> clock every three seconds. <laughs> literally see every logic gate uh, in the machine and you can watch as each operation occurs it operates using a rolling ball this arrangement here is provides what I call the rising edge of the clock the ball is made to go from here I <laughs> love it that's the rising edge of the clock and then on the, the falling edge, this is when the ball is rolling down, and on the falling edge of the clock, all computer operations are synchronized to the falling edge of the clock. Now, the basically, the logic gate in this machine are little pieces that look something like this, and they can rotate from about there to about there. Uh, if, if one of them is this way, and a ball is rolling down, and it hits here, then it simply rolls off this way. It hits that, this thing, and rolls down. If it's the other way, If it's set the other way, then the ball simply rolls over the top of it and heads off this way. So an example of a logic gate that performs uh, an AND function would be like this. For the ball hmm. to arrive here, both of these have to be turned to the right, as shown. If either one of these is set the other way, then the ball heads off that way. And so you could say if the ball ends up over here, you performed an OR gate, either this one or this one. Mm -hmm. If both of them are to the right, the ball ends up here, you've performed an AND gate function. And so you can perform the AND or the OR gate, and if you look at the machine, there are quite a few of these on the machine itself to perform the logic functions. And the machine also has <coughs> memory elements which look something like this which rotate, and they retain information. Basically, if it's set this way, and a ball comes down from above and strikes it, it rotates like that, and ends up the other way, and the ball rolls off. And then again, if a ball comes in and strikes it, it'll rotate the other way, and the ball will roll off that way. Whatever position it is, uh, to the right is a one. 
and to the left is a zero in this machine. So it's a flip-flop. So it's a flip-flop. Electronically, that's called a flip-flop. And electronically, uh, this is a logic gate. And we have both of them in this machine. So when I started on this, I planned the whole thing out using CAD software on the computer. And these are all laser cut parts. I went to, I joined a maker club, a maker space they called it, and used their laser uh, cutter to cut out all the parts. There are a few pieces missing right in here. And that should be a perfect match of missing parts as marked on the wood should be a perfect match to this. This is the prototype for this last section. The way that I scratch built this computer is, first I laid it all out in the CAD software, and then one section at a time, I built a prototype and made change after change after change until that much of it worked. So this, these parts are going to be taken off and installed here to complete the operation. So it's a work in progress, but it's moving along. So I'll pass this around. You can actually, with your finger, kind of pretend it's a ball, and you can see how the thing would go, and you can try it different ways. These pieces also rotate to different positions. And, uh, Take a look and you can kind of get a feel for how the thing functions. Hmm. There's just one mark. There's just, oh yes, you see, <laughs> the way this thing works, is, this is by the way, I'm hoping this will be for educational purposes, if I can just have some contacts in the educational industry so I can talk to people about this. <laughs> because this would be a good learning tool for people to learn digital logic uh, and how it really works. And it would get around the problem of today's digital circuitry being so fast in operation that you really can't see what's happening. Hmm. You're an artist, Jim. I'm getting better at woodwork as time goes by. <laughs> no, no, no. Because the art so piece, the visualization. Yeah, the visualization. <laughs> so uh, there's some digital logic at the bottom which decides how many clock pulses are required to complete the current instruction. And the machine will stop when the instruction has been executed. How does it know when it's stopped? Well, uh, that's why there's some logic gates down here at the bottom, which detect certain conditions. So the choices are to complete an instruction, either one clock pulse, or two, or four, or five, which would be the number of clock pulses, five, required to calculate the square root of a number, which is the most complicated thing this will do when the last few pieces have been installed. Currently, it won't quite get that much done. But the plan is, when the last parts are installed, it should be able to add, subtract, multiply, divide, or calculate a square root. Wow. Mm. <laughs> is there anything that sounds like a calculator? <laughs> 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 but very slow. Everything is displayed <laughs> in, in binary. This is the A register, the accumulator. The least significant bit is up here at the top, and when it's turned to the right, that's a 1. And the most significant bit is down here at the bottom. And the other register on the left? Okay, this register over here is the Q register. It displays the result of a division or a square root. And if you're multiplying, it's one of the numbers that you would multiply together. And there's another register here, which has this style. And, uh, in, and it looks like the rolling ball can't change the state of it. But 
this is where there will eventually be a return ramp. And if the ball falls in these holes, there will eventually be a second layer down here, which has flip-flops that will make these turn. So this register, even though it doesn't look like it would store numbers, mm. it can when that much is done. Yeah. I've got the, the parts for the bottom layer laser cut. Just haven't installed them yet. Get those. <laughs> and then there's the hole? No, no. no yeah, I'll these are stand. holes. Gotcha. <laughs> you see, and under certain conditions, the ball is made to fall into the hole. And then it flips. And then, it, and then when, it, when it comes back out of the return ramp, it rolls down here and is sucked back up to the top to start over. So if it doesn't go through the return ramp, it stops. Yes. And you've got your answer. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Would you see a need for multiple of these to be side by side so that you could represent different times? Sure. Time spaces? Yes. Okay. Parallel process. I'm 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 kind of looking toward having a bunch of these at schools, uh -huh. so that for some particular class where they're teaching digital logic, it's easier to visualize how digital logic really works. What level? I do not know. Hmm. I'd say the concepts are fairly complicated. The concepts are kind of complicated, but they're easier to understand this way. But if you make it a game, yeah. it doesn't matter what it's doing. You're just teaching them the concepts. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It, it would depend on how you write the instruction manual. If you write the instruction manual as though it's a series of games, mm -hmm. then that would do it. I'll play with you. Uh, are there any <laughs> questions before I demonstrate this machine? <laughs> okay, hang on a minute. Demonstration. Now it plugs in because this ball elevating mechanism is a pneumatic mechanism. It operates by suction. I'm using a motor because it's quieter, but I tried it with just the hose of a vacuum cleaner and it works just <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's just the same, except that it's a lot louder with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Let's just make it as hacky as we can. Maybe you can have one be pumped with a bicycle pump. These are control lights in your hands. A glitch. <laughs> I think the kids really understand the term glitch. There's some movie or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If they're all set to a logic one, then what it does is it takes an alternate path and comes out here, which is an accumulator overflow. So, for uh -huh. example, if you add two numbers and the result is larger than it can store, <laughs> yeah. it'll come out a different pathway and you can use that to make the machine stop if you want to. So I'm visualizing, I'm visualizing certain configurations that you would describe. They would set it up and then you would demonstrate it.
I think you need to enter it in a maker fair. In a maker fair? Yeah. Don't you think so? It's yeah, like so cool. Yeah, it is. It's Definitely really cool. I don't know if they're still having them, right? Yeah, some of them. Yeah. Oh, I well, think LA, they must. LA, oh, right. Hey, Jim, did you hear that? Yeah, I originally had just a piece oh, of Oh, you can get context there. It, it, it. Uh, it went through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I it yeah, yeah. A piece of the carpet in there would be used. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This thing needs a muffler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still quieter than It needs a what? A muffler? <laughs> Oh no, you wanted to make as much noise as possible and if it needs to chug, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> it's like, you know that sound before it takes off? In December... You know when a clock pulse has occurred. In December, we got the uh, Maker Fair in downtown Los Angeles library. You might want to bring it to the downtown Los Angeles uh, library. Yeah, we'll probably all be there. <laughs> yeah, we already signed up? Yeah, no, yeah. no, I did no, already as a club. So the RSSC will be there. RSSC will be there. Maybe I should do that. Yeah. And the um, interactions, all the mechanics. Well, that's why I built it as separate sections first, one at a time. Yeah. Because this is a. Uh, you see how it's marked prototype number six? This is the sixth version of this. Wow. Which finally works. Hmm. And so it'll fit in this section where you see things that are missing. I'll just take the parts off here and put them on there. Awesome. Did you, so sorry, so did you? I developed it one section at a time. And, and to do a certain, like that, sec each section would have a certain uh, purpose. A certain yeah, this is a uh, this is a multi-phase uh, clock generator, and it's a dual modulus. You can set it for four clock phases or for five clock phases. It needs the fifth clock phase for the square root calculation. I love it. Does this map directly like to? A logic diagram, you could display the yes. equivalent logic diagram, because that would be really Certainly. interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting. I may get to that. I know in my mind, <laughs> but, uh, I don't happen to have it drawn out, but you could easily do that just from looking at it. <laughs> you could easily do well, that just from like looking at it. Look at it and see which sure. way the yeah. marble looks. You could say. And it's the entire square, so it would be really nice. Yeah. Good work. This is really good. The back of the game. Good job. Motor can get air from there or from here. It sucks here. it out here, it, so it, it, can, it can come from either direction. I see, and it, it, it so, exits here. Yeah, so when it's sucking, these pieces it's a baby they close up. And then oh, the air gets oh so it's a valve, yeah. So the only where the air gets in is here, that's where the And then it can pull it up. Oh. And then uh, when it's going fast enough, it just opens this. Oh, that is so funny. That's great. Like, so I just bought a bunch of these at a dollar store. <laughs> Love it. I made an inexpensive one-way valve. Nice work. Nice work.